Hello Year 6, I am going to be reading chapter 13 of Dead Man's Cove, so hopefully we can find out a little bit more about this note that's been left in the bottle. Can I trust you? The words went round and round in Laura's head. Her imagination went into overdrive as she tried to picture the person to whom she'd said yes. She was pretty sure it was a kid, a bored teenager most likely. Either that, or it had been left there as part of an experimental school project. Put a message in a bottle and see if anyone replies. Laura was glad she hadn't been foolish enough to leave her name or address. What intrigued her was the possibility that it might have been something other than a joke. For several adrenaline-filled minutes, she convinced herself that the writer was a hostage who'd been kidnapped for ransom. Then she came to her senses and realised that if someone were being held captive, they'd hardly be allowed to put out an SOS note in a fruit juice bottle. She found it almost impossible to concentrate at school that day. While Mr Gilbert was talking about poetry, she thought of nothing but the mystery of the note writer. She copied out the message and attempted to imitate the note writer's long flowing hand. In any other place, that might have been a clue. But St Ives was a town full of artists, many of whom gave classes in local schools. There were dozens of people who could have left that message. After school, she debated whether to return to the bottle to see if she'd received a reply. In the end, she took the shortcut home. She cut through the botanical gardens, blooming now that spring had sprung. At number 28 Ocean View Terrace, she found Mrs Webb putting the finishing touches to a vegetable casserole. A freshly iced carrot cake was sitting on the table. The housekeeper had long since given up any pretense of liking Laura, and most days treated her with thinly veiled hostility. But this afternoon she gave Laura one of her pug smiles and rushed to dish her up a plate of steaming food. Laura's suspicions were roused even further when Mrs Webb pulled up a chair, pulled herself a cup of tea and said, How are you finding it at St Ives Primary School then, Laura? They'll be a friendly lot there, I'm sure. Making you welcome, are they? There was something about Mrs Webb that made Laura's skin crawl. It was like getting up close and personal with a spider. Uh-huh, she mumbled in a non-committal way. They're very nice. She shoved an extra large fork full of casserole and rice into her mouth. The sooner she could finish her food, the sooner she could escape. She was conscious that Mrs Webb had probably heard about the Tarek debacle from the Mukhtars. If the housekeeper asked her about her ex-friend, Laura wasn't sure she'd be able to keep herself from screaming. But Mrs Webb didn't mention Tarek. She purred, and how are you finding St Ives? It's a great town, said Laura, stabbing her fork into the carrot. I really like it here. Mrs Webb bared her teeth. Well now, isn't that wonderful? And your uncle? You get along with him okay? He has his quirks, that one, but his heart is in the right place. Oh, it, it definitely is, Laura agreed, wondering where this was leading. I wouldn't hear a bad word about him, said Mrs Webb. She added three spoonfuls of sugar to her tea and slurped a mouthful noisily. Only, she moved the chair closer to Laura's. Laura had to make a conscious effort not to push her own away. See, I worry about him. It's none of my business, but he seems very tired lately. You're right, thought Laura. It's none of your business, you old witch. Mrs Webb slurped her tea again. You seem like an observant girl. Has he been going out on out late at night? I mean, is his job keeping him up all hours, or has he been walking the dog or seeing his friends? Not that he seems to have too many of those. What with being a workaholic and all. The casserole, which Laura had been enjoying, started to make her feel nauseous. If she hadn't known for sure, it would be a mistake. She would have told Mrs Webb to take a flying jump and walked out of the room. It took all her self-control to remain at the table and give the housekeeper her best smile. I really wouldn't know. I'm in bed by nine every night and I sleep like a baby. A tornado wouldn't wake me. Mrs Webb's mask slipped for a second and she regarded Laura with dislike. 
so you don't know where he goes. Only I worry about him, see. I worry he doesn't take care of himself, and that it'll, it'll catch up with him one day. Laura carried her plate to the sink and washed it. She gave the housekeeper another big smile. You're very kind-hearted, Mrs Webb. I'm sure my uncle would be touched to know that you care so much about what he's doing, or where he might be going in the middle of the night. Now hold on a minute, the housekeeper said hotly. Don't you go saying anything. I'm only concerned about his welfare. I have to get on with my homework, Mrs Webb. Thank you for the casserole. The meal was fantastic, as usual. You should enter a competition. You'd win an award. An award for cooking, but not for acting, Mrs Webb, Laura thought as she replayed the conversation the following morning. She had debated whether to say something to her uncle when he returned from work, but he'd come in at 7pm, looking as if he'd had the weight of the world on his shoulders, and, after a silent dinner, had retreated to his study. Anyhow, what would she say to him? That Mrs Webb seemed to be rather too keen on knowing what he got up to in his free time, or that she thought, but wasn't sure, she'd seen the housekeeper going through his papers. What would, what would be the point? Calvin Redfern had told her himself that Mrs Webb wouldn't win any prizes for her personality or housekeeping. He'd laughed about it. He wouldn't appreciate being bothered with such trivial things when he had more important matters on his mind. Laura sighed as she put on her school uniform and applied gel to her short blonde hair. When her uncle was around, he was all the company she needed. When he was lost in his own world, she couldn't help wishing things had somehow worked out with Tarek. She so badly needed a friend. She pushed up the blind and opened the window. A figure in the cemetery caught her eye. He was standing beside the twisted tree holding a pair of binoculars to her, his eyes. Unless she was mistaken, he was looking straight at her house at number 28 Ocean View Terrace. Laura picked up her school bag and hurried downstairs. All her senses were on high alert. She knew better than to challenge the man directly, but she planned to get a good look at him in case he was staking out the house with a view to robbing it later. That way, she'd have a description to give her uncle or the police. She hoped very much that that would not be necessary. As it happened, the man made it easy for her. She was sauntering past the cemetery, making a mental note of his thinning brown hair, bird's nest moustache, ill-fitting trench coat and jeans and cheap shoes when he called out, Twelve years I've been coming here, and that's the first time I've ever seen an ivory girl. Really? Laura said politely, even though she knew she shouldn't talk to strangers. She kept her distance and continued walking. Really? insisted the man. He made no attempt to approach her, but held up a bird-watching handbook. It's quite an exquisite bird, quite unique. Hey, I should mention to your mum and dad that you have a rare bird in your garden. Good luck, Laura told him. We have a wolfhound who's been known to eat unknown callers. She virtually ran down the hill after that. St Ives was one of the most wonderful places in the world, but there was no doubt it had its fair share of oddballs. A fine misty rain was falling over the slate grey ocean. So excited was Laura about the possibility of a new note in the bottle that she was halfway along the beach before she got round to wriggling into her raincoat. Can I trust you? Despite her resolution, she burned with curiosity to know if the writer had replied to her yes. She quickened her pace. At the far end of the beach, a dog walker and three surfers were pointing at something on the sand. Laura couldn't resist going over to see what had caught their attention. She hoped it would be a seal, alive of course, but maybe resting. But there wasn't any seal. When she finally managed to escape the licks of two exuberant Labradors with wet tails and squeezed through the surfers, she saw the last thing she expected. On the sand was a message, written in long flowing letters. The tops of the words had been nibbled away by the incoming tide, and they were nevertheless clearly visible. Prove it. Laura's stomach did a nauseous flip. She knew, just 
absolutely knew that the message was for her. I reckon it's a love thing, one of the surfers was saying. Some guy has asked his girl to marry him and promised to always be true, and she's told him to prove it. Don't be daft, said the dog walker. It's a test. More than likely, it's a message to some gang member. Could be a coded letter ordering them to perform some kind of initiation rite. A gang, jeered the surfer. In St Ives, you must be a tourist. Their voices faded in Laura's ears as she walked away. Can I trust you? The anonymous writer had asked and Laura had replied, yes. Now, he or she had the audacity to challenge her to prove it. She gathered up some stones and pieces of driftwood and carried them up the beach where they couldn't be touched by the tide. She knew she would be late for school, but she didn't care. When she had finished arranging them, she climbed onto a boulder and admired her handiwork from above. She couldn't stop laughing. It was like a shrine to the word that had driven Matron and so many others in Laura's life mad. Why? Well, that was certainly interesting. Who do you think's left this note? Who do you think is asking Laura to prove it? And why? Why are they asking her to prove it? How can she prove herself? How can she prove that she's trustworthy? That's quite a hard task, isn't it? We'd love to hear what you think. So you can email us at the year six email address, or you can share your ideas with us on Teams. We'd love to hear your ideas, uh, but you've got to keep your eyes peeled on the YouTube channel for the next chapters of the story. And we can find out a little bit more about Laura.